All right, people. Good Saturday morning. We got a game tomorrow. We got a game in about 28 and a half hours. And this week, we've got what I call the steal opportunity. We're, we're standing at first base. Pitcher's got a slow wind up. Not, not doing a good job of checking over to first before he pitches. It's a steal opportunity this week in L.A. against the Chargers. When you, as a fan of any sports team, look at the schedule when it comes out at the start of the year or before the start of the year or whatever, before the games start, you look at the schedule, whether or not you'll admit it to yourself, you do mentally pick out those games, right? You're like, okay, that one looks like a win. That one looks like a loss. Uh, that's probably going to be a win. I feel pretty good about us losing that. And this Chargers team, this Chargers game, when I looked at it in the preseason, and I think a lot of people in this, uh, who were watching this video in this community can agree with me, it didn't feel like a win. It certainly felt like something, but it was not a win. Now, this seemed like a bad matchup. It was in L.A. Uh, this Chargers team had an incredibly stacked roster coming into the season. Uh, their head coach was entering their second, his second year after a year where he learned a lot of difficult lessons. And... They just seemed like a team that was primed to ascend to the NFL's elite after a year of being in the middle. So you combine that with some matchup problems like our our defense against a quarterback like a Justin Herbert, uh, their pass rush against our rookie tackles. It, it just it just felt like a loss. It was one of those games you penciled in and went, yeah, it's going to take a lot for something to happen here. But here we are. On Saturday, the day before the game, and I'm sitting here and I'm saying it, I think we're going to win. I think we're going to find a way to beat the Chargers. They're coming off that short week after playing the game against the Broncos. It was a brutal game, an overtime game, a very physical game. Herbert got blasted over and over and over again. Eckler got put through the torture chamber to get through that game, basically. And the Chargers... They have some shortages of manpower that are big. They're missing some guys that you don't want to be missing if you're that Chargers team. And look, through six games, injuries or no injuries, they've had problems that I didn't expect them to. And if those problems maintain, I believe that this Seahawks team can execute what I, again, would call a steal opportunity. Steal a game you maybe weren't expecting to win before the year. Give yourself some breathing room or some opportunity to grow beyond what you originally thought the team was going to be. This is a great opportunity for the Seahawks team to show that we're not just a, you know, watchable team. We might actually be a good team. So the key here is that Chargers defense is bad. They played a good game last week against the Broncos, but let's face it right now, that Broncos offense is kind of a cure for what ails you if you're a defense Overall this year, they, they've they given up a lot. Um, before that Broncos game, I think they were 31st in points allowed. Now I think they're like 26th or 27th, somewhere around there. And they, they've they given up a lot to teams like the Browns. And I know the Browns have a good offense, but you let Jacoby Brissett go up and down the field on you, something's not quite right. You... Uh, <clears throat> you look at some of the other games they played, like against Jacksonville, where Jacksonville blew them out wasn't even competitive. Houston was able to move the ball on uh, the Chargers pretty well. So this team, it's got a lot of talent on that defense, and part of it is they're missing guys. They don't have Bosa, and um, they basically have not had J.C. Jackson because he's been replaced this year by a doppelganger who is the worst player in football, or whatever happened there, I don't know. And you've also got some lesser injury concerns like Sebastian Joseph Day may miss this game. He was questionable. He didn't do a lot of practicing this week. You you do have some missing soldiers on that Chargers team. But even with those missing soldiers, and I'm not here to downplay the effect of Bosa, it's a mysteriously ineffective unit. And I don't really know why. Brandon Staley was a defensive coach for the Rams before he came over. And the one year he was their defensive coordinator, the defense was much better than it's been pretty much every other year, I think. I remember under Wade Phillips, they were just kind of okay. Brandon Staley takes over, and I think they led the league in points allowed. So, <clears throat> or last in the league in points allowed, as it were. So, I don't really know why it's this bad when they have 
They still have players like Khalil Mack, who just got there. They've got a pretty good safety combo with Derwin James and Nasir Adderley. They've, they're getting a, uh, finally a good year out of a guy like Jerry Tillery, who's been a big disappointment until this year came around. Um, it, it's a defense that has some real talent on it. It's, it doesn't really make a lot of sense why they're struggling so much to get off the field, but they are. Um, one thing that really gets my attention is that even though they haven't given up a lot of rushing yards this year, mostly because their offense has managed to keep the pedal to the metal and they've been able to keep opposing teams from running the ball excessively, they're giving up well over five yards of carry on the ground. So my first thought going into this game is, all right, Kenneth Walker just had his best game of his career. Um, this, this run game seems like it's starting to come together a little bit. They put together some good games recently. They played well against the Saints. Let's take advantage of Kenneth Murray, another Kenneth, who's having a really bad time of it over in L.A. and run. So that's the first thing that occurs to me, just... Let's get a run game going. I know that running behind Austin Blythe sometimes doesn't go well. I know we don't have Gabe Jackson. But let's try to get it going this week against a front that is really having a hard time stopping the run. I think mostly because of Kenneth Murray. He's really not off to a good start for his career at all. Um, not having a good season so far. PFF has him ranked right at the bottom of the entire league. And overall, he seems like he's been a disappointment so far. So I look at that Chargers team that didn't really stop the run that well last year. And it seems to me they still can't stop the run. But <clears throat> don't forget about what else you can do as an offense. Because this Chargers team runs a lot of man defense. And the Seahawks have been excellent so far this year against man. So if the Chargers want to send their guys out in man a lot. And you're Geno Smith and you're Metcalf and Lockett and um, Disley and... Fant, and you've you've had success against man defense pretty much all year. You you definitely take advantage. We know we're getting J.C. Jackson. He's going to play in some capacity, and he's played so bad this year. He, he's got to be a guy you look at and go, we can take advantage of that. So there's going to be opportunities to put up some real points on this Chargers defense, I think. I know Lockett's probably playing, but I'm still concerned about his ability to go at full. Is he going to be able to get open on that hamstring? Is that going to be an issue for him? It feels like it will be. If it is, that obviously takes some of the potential out of a game like this. You really want to have your receivers so you can force J.C. Jackson to prove that he's gotten past his early season slump. And, yeah, I, I think that there's a lot you can do against this uh, Chargers defense. I think you can abuse the tight ends, run the ball, throw to your outside receivers. I think it's just not a very good defense. Again, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me why. I, I know they're missing maybe their best player, but there should be enough there for that defense to be okay. And again, it took a Nathaniel Hackett, Russell Wilson special to take them out of the headlines for incompetent defense. So yeah, um, I expect good things from our offense against this uh, defense. Not having Bosa is huge. It means we can throw extra attention at a guy like Mack. He is far and away their best player in the front seven so far this year. He is far and away their best pass rusher. Uh, they may not have Joseph Day, which is also going to weaken their front a little bit, even though he wasn't playing amazing this year. He was their main one tech. So I'm expecting, I'm going to say I'm expecting at least 24 points. We're going to bounce back a little bit after what happened in Arizona. Going to move the ball better. <clears throat> and I think that we have enough wrong with that Chargers defense to really take advantage of. So, high expectations for the boys here. And for our defense, this is not a great matchup under normal circumstances. I would definitely look at this and go, I have a feeling that Justin Herbert's going to do to us what Phillip Rivers used to do to, for, to us. He was just one of those quarterbacks that really understood how to beat us. We got Keenan Allen. We've got... Um, we got, uh, shoot, Mike Williams, one of the coolest receivers in the league. Uh, Joshua Palmer, one of the uh, mid-round of uh, receivers from last year who I really like. Um, you've got, uh, Austin Eckler, one of the coolest stories in the league in terms of running backs. You've got a pretty stacked crew of skill position players on that Chargers offense. And you combine it with an offensive line that they have very aggressively dumped resources into 
First round pick on Rashawn Slater, threw all that money at Corey Lindsley. First round pick on Zion Johnson. I would go, yeah, this is a game where we can't get good pressure on the quarterback and he just picks our, our secondary apart. Not so. Not so. Herbert's injured, playing through a busted rib. He's obviously in pain. It's obviously affecting him. No Rashawn Slater, out until later this year. Corey Lindsley is back. That's significant, no doubt about it. They, they need some help in the interior of that offensive line because they're not getting great guard play. Zion Johnson's having a typical rookie year, and I can't remember who their other guard is, but he's not playing terribly well right now. Um, Keenan Allen. I kind of feel like he's not playing. That's my gut feeling right now. I think they rest him until the bye week, but we'll see. If he does play, you know he's not completely there, and he's kind of the guy who takes their offense from really good to great. I think that Herbert is a different player when he has Keenan Allen out there. It, it's um, he, He's one of these special talents in this league. Uh, maybe he's not the best receiver, but he's probably the best route runner in the league. Um, I don't know what his routes are going to look like when he's got the busted hamstring, kind of like the same concerns I have with Lockett. But um, him not being out there is huge. No Joshua Palmer. No Donald Parham Jr. They're missing a lot of key depth on that offense. Missing, not only are they missing two stars with Slater and Allen, they're missing their depth too. So you look at what happened Monday night when the Chargers played the Broncos. You had a lot of uh, pressure on Herbert, a lot of pass rushers getting in there untouched, a lot of plays made in the backfield. Broncos' front is really good, but the Chargers' front is in a very bad state to allow something like that to happen. Let's just be real here. So, straight up, <clears throat> if this defensive line can play with any of the passion that they played against the Cardinals with, I think good things are going to happen, and it's going to result in a win. Period. Um, I am concerned about our linebackers against Gerald Everett. Gerald Everett's having a good season. Herbert's been very happy to spam Everett the ball when uh, Allen's not been out there for him. That's been a big, big lifesaver for him, and he's having a good year. Um, I am worried about Austin Eckler against our linebackers. He's a guy who could really torch us for over 100 receiving yards out of the backfield. That's his game. He can do that for sure. But our cornerbacks are playing really well right now, and I'm feeling pretty good about their ability to take away Los Angeles' limited receiver core right now. Again, missing possibly two of their top three options. I will find out about Keenan Allen. I feel like he doesn't play. The way people are talking about it, it feels like he doesn't go. And if he does go, it would be a mistake. But well, I guess we'll see what the team decides to do, right? That's just kind of my feeling on it. Um, you're not going to see as many open receivers. It's going to be harder for Herbert to get the ball out. And... With the defensive line having made some of the changes that they made against the Cardinals, I think they can take advantage. I think they can get to Herbert, knock him off, and um, you know, knock him off of rhythm. And there's going to be the opportunity to make some plays on defense that I didn't think were going to be there. That tackle combination they have going on in LA right now is terrible. I watched that right tackle of theirs go against uh, the Broncos, and over and over and over again, he just lets the guy run by him. Anybody can do that. Daryl Taylor can do that. Alton Robinson, with his injury, could probably go on the field and do what he, uh, the Broncos were doing to that guy. So there's an opportunity here that I just didn't think was going to be there. It's going to be hard for them to get a bunch of receivers on the field that they feel good about because they're missing guys. But they're missing their backup tight end too, so they can't just go super tight end heavy the whole game and feel great about it. And I think they're missing a backup running back as well. Not a significant player, but it's really cutting down on what this Chargers team can do. And at the end of the day, I step back, I look at it, and I go, with all the things this Chargers team is going through, I think we should win. I know we're underdogs, and I, I totally get why. I know the Chargers are good, but combined with the fact that the Chargers just had an emotional, tough, come-from-behind overtime win on a short week, Monday night football to Sunday football, I kind of feel like we should, right? Right? And that's kind of a dangerous place to be. I don't know if I should be drinking the Kool-Aid yet, but you look at everything that LA's missing on both sides of the ball and the problems they have anyway, I think we should. And I think we will. 24-17, something like that. Maybe a few more points. But I think we got this. 
I feel good about it. All right, we'll see if that pays off. See you guys later. Go Hawks.